There have been loads of TV shows and movies out there where the car has been a star. Movies like The Dukes of Hazard, Bullet, and Ghostbusters. Now, while all these cars are great, not a lot of people want to reproduce them, myself included. There is one movie car, however, that I would love to have in my garage. If you were to ask a group of architects to improve on things like the Eiffel Tower, the Guggenheim Museum, they might look at you like you're crazy. I mean, these are works of art. And they were designed at the pinnacle of the architect's creativity. The same can be said for automobiles. This is a 1967 GT500, a car that was redesigned for the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. It's an absolutely stunning piece of automotive history, and we're going to take you through a couple of bits and pieces to show you exactly what they changed. There are certain details about any muscle car that you notice. First and foremost of this one is that a lot of things have been actually molded into the body. If you looked at the duct on the B-pillar right here, it's been actually molded into the body. There's no crease and there's no seam here. The other thing to notice is that this duct is fully functional. There are actually vents behind the B-pillar that you can open and close to generate airflow throughout the cabin of the car. Now obviously people aren't going to take an original GT500 and cut it up, but this car is an original GT390 Mustang. Now what designers did with this car was they did a lot of little enhancements. For instance, they cut the front bumper section out of the grill to give it a much more aggressive look. They added two sets of driving lights by the way of these massive hella lights and these small PIA projector lamps. The nose cone has been extended and given a little bit of a rake to give it more of a P51 Mustang stance. Other things you might want to take notice of on this car are how the rear ducktail spoiler is molded into the rear deck lid. I mean, it's nice and smooth, comes right in. It's not some tacked on piece. The same could be said for the rear quarter. I mean, it comes down, follows the body line, and meets up with the center ducktail. Now, if you look at the bumper, the bumper is now flush with the body as well. What the designers did was they took an already beautiful body, gave it a little plastic surgery, and tightened everything up. No longer do we have If he's got one on his arm, I gotta see this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Billy. Now. Most of the time when we film, people will stop, they'll come up, but they generally don't say anything. Billy pulled in with his car and immediately stuck his forearm out the window. Now the reason for this is he's got that car tattooed on that arm. So now, he, you said you've never seen one in person, right? Nope. Well, let's take a walk over and, I don't know, give it a once over and see what you think. <laughs> so what do you like about this thing? Like what, what, what made you get it tattooed? Like what, I mean. The movie, really. I mean, I've always liked the body lines. I mean, the original movie, right. the remake, car was even better. I mean, it was just everything about it. And that is internet magic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
He races Mazda RX-7s, and he's been doing so for the better part of 15 years. This guy is not like a checkbook guy. This is a guy that worked his ass off, got some great things, and drives and abuses the crap out of them, which is why he is on this show today. I have had interest in cars um, all my life, and I've in high school I used to um, work as a teacher's assistant in auto shop, and then I worked in a gas station and helped tear cars down. And, I've always been interested, so I bought and sold cars, fixed them up. I had every car you can dream of. All right, we always see Matt and Chris and everybody doing like these zero to 60 runs and everything. Let's get an idea of what this car is like if you just run through the gears. Not the crazy, no super crazy burnouts, just some nice acceleration. Let's see what we do, right? All right, then tack it out. This thing is like instant wood. I freaking love it. Oh my God. Chris Harris, I know you're in the UK, but holy sh would you like this car? <laughs> oh my God, so good. So good. If there's a limiting factor to this car, it's the tire size. He's running 225s on the front and 255s in the rear. I mean, when you think about it, like, that's not a lot of rubber to cope with, you know, close to 500 horsepower. And if you start to push this thing, you can feel where this car does need a little more rubber. From an exhaust standpoint, the car is tits, man. I mean, it just sounds outstanding. You know, the mufflers are bellowing on your left and right sides. They sound badass. That's what a muscle car should do, right? It should wake you up. It should open your senses and get your blood flowing, man. And if this car doesn't do it, then you're dead. There's something seriously wrong with you, so go get checked out at a health clinic. I don't think I would have ever bought a regular GT500 stock car because I like to resto mod the car and I like to put all the modern things in it that makes it drive really nice. And, you know, I like to have air conditioning and I like to have a nice stereo and power steering and, and still I want it to have a lot of power. This car has 200 horsepower nitrous and um, I've never pushed that button because it has so much power already, but I'll probably do that at some point and have to take it, take it down to the quarter mile and give it a whirl. I'm not gonna push this button because, well, first of all, it's not my car. Second of all, I, I don't wanna blow anything up. I mean, it's not the thing. Now, for all you guys that are gonna be like, oh, Musto, you're such a pussy or whatever. You know what? Think about that statement again and realize that you're sitting watching me in front of a computer and I'm the guy driving the Eleanor through the canyons of California. Yeah, you guys are absolutely right, pussy. actually want to clone. Dolly the sheep that they made, not so much. Sophia Loren in the 70s and 60s, pretty good. This car, absolutely. Outstanding, 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 and all with the air conditioning on. <laughs> Such a fun car. One of the reasons this car makes me laugh so much is because of how good the drivability is. The steering, thanks to the Mustang 2 rack, is nicely weighted and crisp, giving this car a turn and feel of a modern automobile. You can combine that with the coilover suspension up front and shocks that aren't overly aggressive, and you've got a machine that's just as home in the canyons as it is cruising on the interstate. I'm not sure that I'm ready to sell it just yet. I'm just I'm enjoying it so much. I just got it finished, you know. But it, you know, you know how it is with a car. It's always for sale at the right price, maybe. <laughs> Improvements to old cars come in small doses. 
They come in the form of a wooden steering wheel, a leather seat, and maybe, I don't know, maybe a set of headers. Re-envisioning and redesigning an old car, well, that takes determination. That takes years of know-how and knowledge. You know, if you were to ask somebody to redesign a 67 Shelby GT500, odds are they're going to tell you they can't do it. It's already a perfect car. However, when this car was redesigned for the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, it broke the mold and set a new standards among movie customs. This car is the new mold. It's the new car that everybody wants but can't have. And after driving it for an afternoon, I'm floored at how good it is. We had a great day with it. We enjoyed it. We even did a few burnouts in it. So we thank you guys for tuning in to this week's Big Muscle. And uh, come back and see us again next week on Drive. Not many people replicate these cars. I mean, hell, I wouldn't even want to replicate a lot of these cars. There is one car, however, that's right behind us that's really f***ing everything up. There are loads of TV shows and movies out there where the car is the actual star. Movies like this car and the truck that's going to come behind it are going to f*** us up for the rest of the time we're standing out here and make this take take 15 times longer. That's right. You in the pickup. Keep going. Seriously. Nah, keep going. Keep going. You didn't f*** anything up. There... There are loads of TV shows and movies out there. <laughs>